Guys, come on! <laughs> Hello? Sam? <laughs> oh, God! Chris, the choice is yours. Hello? Oh, God, we need help, please! Me. It's okay. Okay. You're okay? Oh my gosh, your fingers, Mike! Yeah. Yeah, and I'm the lucky one. Jesus, what happened? There's a fucking maniac up here on the mountain. He's... He's trying to kill us all. Listen, this guy who you're talking about, he attacked me. He showed me these videos, too. And one of them showed Josh being killed. Just ripped apart by this huge fucking saw blade. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is going on around here? There's a door here. It won't open. Can you unlock it from your side? Towel didn't turn out to be the best outfit for fighting off killer maniacs, you know. Do you mind, Mike? Oh, yeah. uh, right. My bad. Okay. Shit! Damn it! 
God. Here goes 600 bucks. Better be worth it. I look great in that top. All right. Now we're talking.
on, for fuck's sake. Son of a bitch. was down here.
<laughs> Josh. Oh, oh, very good. <laughs> Every one of you, you got my name. <laughs> and after all you've been through, good, 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 good. I mean, how does that feel, right? How does it feel? Do you enjoy feeling terrorized, humiliated? I mean, panicked? All those emotions that my sisters got to feel once, one year ago? Only, only guess what? They didn't get to laugh it off. No, 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 no. They're gone. I don't know if you noticed this, Josh, but none of us are laughing. Oh, come, 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 come. Why the long faces? Come on. It's good to get the heart racing every now and then, right? And race they did. I mean, every one of you just pitter pat, pitter pat. I hope you appreciated my little phantasmagorical spectacle. I mean, <laughs> no detail too small. Did that just no happen? opportunity missed. It was such. A delight to play the puppet master to, to all of your Pavlovian panic. <laughs> and all that gore, gore, it was gore galore, big bodies. I mean, God, that shit was expensive. And no retakes. Nope, nope, nope. Only double takes. Oh, you should have seen your faces. Hook, line, and sinker for every little stinker. <laughs> Josh, why are you doing this? Yeah, don't even ask this squirrely little runt. He's got no clue. He's out of his fucking tree. He's definitely off his meds. Oh, come on, you guys. Revenge is the best medicine. You're done. It might, he's sick. What? Come on, you guys are all gonna thank me when you guys become internet sensations. Wait, what, what? Oh, you better believe this little puppy's going viral, ladies and germs. I mean, we got the unrequited love. We got, we got blood. I don't think there's enough hard drives in China to, to count all the views we're gonna get, you guys. What are you talking about, you asshat? Jessica's fucking dead. What? Did you hear me? Jessica is dead. You are gonna fucking pay, you ah! bitch! Ah! Uh, guys! Guys, come on. Seriously, this is crazy, you know? Shut up. Why'd you hit her, man? Huh? Why'd you the fucking hit her? Ah! What are you talking you about? You punched Ashley, you piece of shit! Mm. Oh. I got so mad. You don't hit a girl. You, you just don't. Dude, dude, Chris, bro, I... I'm not your bro. Where are we going? Where are you guys taking me? I'm locking you up, bro. What? Can't do anything stupid before we call the police in the morning. Come on. I didn't do anything. Are you serious, bro? Goddamn murderer is what you are. I didn't do it. Michael, please just listen to me, man. I did not hurt Jessica. You know what, man? You need to shut up. Chris, hey, come on, coach. He's, we're partners. Stop, don't say that. I'm be a dick! You want to see what you want to see. You're Stop talking! Fine. You are ah, Dude, ah, it's not my fault you suckers can't take a joke! Ugh. Oh, oh wait, did I hurt you? Did you just, you feel a little... A little bit of pain mm. right now. I am so, so sorry. Ah, stop it! Jesus, dude. stop! Oh my God, I'm sorry, man. I can't tell you how sorry I am that something happened to Jessica. But I swear, I swear to you, I have no idea what happened to her. Josh, be honest. Do you really expect us to trust you for a single goddamn second after all the shit you put us through? <laughs> but can't we all just get along? <laughs> ah! Damn it! <laughs> Not dicking around. This is not how it's supposed to go down. <laughs> You're just a bunch of bullies! You can't hang out a, a guy just to try like this, guys. Huh? Not like... Not like you got the guts to really do anything about it anyways. 
You're the biggest coward there is! Uh-huh. I did something. I made you believe in the world I created. And I showed you parts of yourself you were too afraid to visit. You manipulated us. You tricked us, you hurt your friends, and you did it all while you hid in the shadows. You're a coward, Josh. That's all you are. Okay, time me up now, okay. Stay still, right, man. Right, 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 still. Okay, can't tie him up if they just wiggle around. Gosh, dude. I need me a little wiggle room, huh? What does it take to shut you up? Oh, not so tight, okay? Not so tight, okay? Get Those plastic ties, that's where it's what? at. In God's name, is he talking about? This is hard to watch. You ever see this kind of shit before? Oh, I've never, never seen him like this. Your money back. <laughs> Everybody's stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Chris and Ash. Chris is an ass. Ash leaves the dumb dumb. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, what did you say? Well, I said you're a dummy, dummy. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh, Ashley. Oh. Ashley, I'll get you out of this. I want you to die. Oh, I never imagined in my wildest dreams that you liked me. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. You know what that sound is? It's the sound of never kissing Ashley, you pussy! Stop! Yeah, you know, you might as well let Ashley sleep with Mike. I mean, at least he's got some notches in his belt, you know? He'll treat her right! You're fucking pathetic, Christopher! I'm gonna beat his head off! Don't listen to him! Not worth it! Hey, Mike! Mike, 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 Mike! Mike! What? What happened with Jess, Mike? You know what happened. No. No, I... I don't. I got a problem, Mike. I don't remember killing Jess. Jesus Christ. No, I mean, like, I feel like I, I would remember killing her, you know? She's so soft. And she's probably got, like, a really tight bod. SHUT YOUR FUCKING MOUTH! Son of a bitch! Ah! Stop, dude! Chill out! What the hell are you doing? I, 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 you, you were gonna shoot him. I was just messing with him, man. Just trying to scare him. What? I, give him a taste of his own medicine. Well, what the hell, man? I could've killed him! Relax. It's fine. He's... He'll be fine. I, I didn't like doing that. Well, now, at least, he's quiet. You should go back to the lodge, man. What? 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 Why? I'm gonna watch him until the morning. I don't need you beating him half to death the whole time. Th th that's not fair. I, th I thought I was protecting you. Yeah, well, job well done. Take a vacation. Well, what the hell, man? Go back to the lodge. Now. Dude. Now! Josh. <laughs> Josh! How does it feel? Do you enjoy all those emotions that my sisters got to feel once, one year ago? Only, only guess what? They didn't get to laugh it off. No! Nope! No, no, no! They're gone! Jessica's fucking dead! What? Did you hear me? Jessica is dead. And you are gonna fucking pay, you ah! dick! What happened with Jess, Mike? I don't remember killing Jess. Jeez. Christ. Oh, God. Oh, my God, Matt.
This is gonna be the way.
now. Let me in! Let me in! Let her in quick! Shut the door! Oh my god, shut the door! I'm, are you alright? I didn't think that I'd make it. You were screaming bloody murder. You, okay? you look totally wild. There was something. Where is Matt? Come sit down, sit down. Something's out there. Did you there. guys split up? A monster is a monster. Wait. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I don't feel anything. I just need to calm down. It was moving so damn fast. What? I just had to get away. Wait, wait, what? There, there was this, this thing, whatever it was. M, M, and you can relax. Josh was messing with You're us. You're not listening to me. M, can you tell us exactly what happened? I am trying to tell you. We were climbing up the tower and it... It fell. The whole tower just fell right into the mines. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What mines? There are these mine shafts all over, running under everything. When the tower fell, we ended up down there. I don't understand. The tower fell? How'd it fall? There's something else. I found this little, like, it was almost like a camp. And this little broken wooden cross. And it, it had, it had Beth's name on it. I think they fell down there. And, and I think Beth died from the fall. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Poor Beth. Listen, in in the tower there was there was a radio and I, and I got through to someone, but then that was right when the tower collapsed. Em, you made it. Oh God, yeah, yeah, Mike. Barely. What about Matt? We're trying to figure that out. Yeah, and there was, there was this monster that was chasing her. I... She's all messed up, guys. Emily, hey Em. Whoa. Who the fuck can that be? Josh. Jess. It's not Jess. Sorry, man, but who is it? I don't know. We should check it out. I got your back. Good. L uh, let me have the pistol. I mean, you could take whoever it is through sheer good looks and m muscle and all that. Just, I, I should have the pistol. Sorry, Charlie. No pistol for you. Not after what went down in the shed. Come on, man. I was trying to protect you. Well, now I got you covered. So, don't worry. Okay. I'm gonna open the door. You ready? <laughs> Hold on there. Hold on there, mister. Freeze. Ah, oh, what? All right, all right. Just take it easy, Grandpa. Okay, everybody, just calm down. Now, nah, just move over there. Go on, move. Let me say what I came to say. I'm here to tell you what you're up against being back on this mountain. You should never have returned. I don't know why you did after what happened last year. You mean with Hannah and Beth? Yeah, how could you know without being involved? Oh, we're responsible. You hold on to your horses. I don't take kindly to you kids coming up here to my mountain. Your mountain? Huh? I'm sure the Washingtons would be very surprised to hear that. <laughs> well, the mountain don't belong to me, it's true. But it don't belong to the Washingtons. This mountain belongs to the Wendigo. <laughs> Who? What's he talking about? Who the hell's a Wendigo? Let's hear him out. Not like we have a choice. Now, I'm only gonna tell you this once. It doesn't matter to me if you believe it or not. I got reasons I wanna get it off my chest. See? I told you. He's guilty as shit. Guilty as something. Shut up, Mike. There is a curse that dwells in these mountains. Should any man or woman resort to cannibalism in these woods, the spirit of the Wendigo shall be unleashed. Oh, crap. <laughs> You're gonna need to find somewhere safe. The basement might be okay. Okay, get down there now, all of you, and wait. What? Why? For how long? Until dawn. Guys, I ran off and left Josh when I heard screaming. Where did you leave him? In the shed. Ah, uh, 
Your friend will already be dead. No. No, he, he can't be. We, we were just with him. A lot can happen quickly on this mountain. No. I, I'm not letting anything else happen to him. Anything else? What, what do you mean? Uh, Chris, don't. I hit him. We thought he'd killed Jessica, and, and, and so he got me riled up. And I hit him in the head. Chris! Maybe he deserved it. No matter what, we can't just let him die. Then, I'll go with you. I, I don't need your help. You going alone is suicide. Fine. The rest of you, get down to the basement. Be safe. And don't go outside again until we're back. You don't seem to understand the magnitude of the situation. Well, I'm going to get Josh, aren't I? No, I'm going to get Josh. You're going to help me. Do you understand? Uh, yeah, I think so. You need to follow me and do everything I tell you. This is the end. You point towards the thing you want to kill. I know how to use a shotgun, man. No, you don't. What? How do you know? Trust me. I know. Hey. Come back safe. Come on. We need to hurry, son. I, uh... See you soon. So, so tell me, you're the expert on these things. What's, uh, what, what's a guy got to know? You just be careful. You follow my lead. So, how many times do I have to shoot it with the shotgun before it's dead? Well, you'll be shooting it a long time. You, you mean this thing won't even kill it? No, it'll slow it down. Well, how do you kill it? They don't like fire. I don't like fire. They fear it. And it can kill them. If you have to. Their skin is like... It's like tough armor. Unless you burn it off first. It's gross. Well, what, what are these things like? I mean, are they just crazy unpredictable? Or... I mean, can you figure out what they're gonna do? some pattern, like any animal, or human. Well, like how? Like we've got schedules? Well, they only hunt at night. Oh. Why? I didn't ask. Any, uh, pro-Wendigo tips? Like if I rub garlic all over me, they would be able to smell me or something? Uh, they'll still smell you. Anything like that? You if you're standing still. It's like toads. <laughs> Sight is based on changing the movement in their field of vision. So if I don't move, I, I'm, I'm basically invisible. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't recommend testing it out. Unless you have no other choice. Damn it! Josh, he can still be out there. <laughs> First, the wind you go. He'll render you immobile. And then he strips the skin off of your entire body, piece by piece. And then he keeps you alive and aware and feasts on your organs, one piece at a time. So the launch then. Might still be near.
Statement of the night. Chris, where's the flamethrower gun? Uh, yeah, he, uh... He didn't make it? No. What happened? The thing, it, uh, tore him apart. Right in front of me. Oh, God. All right. These are all the doors? Yeah. Are you sure? What are you looking for? Another way out. Mike, look, I really don't think that's a good idea. We should stay put right here until dawn. At least we're safe down here. Oh, yeah? All wrapped up like a little present with a bow on top for that thing to tear us apart on Christmas morning? People will come for us in the morning. You don't sound so sure. That is what'll happen, right, Em? Yeah, I, I mean, right? Well, you can wait. I'm leaving. Mike, there's no key for the cable car. Josh, he's got to have it. Josh? One of his dirty little tricks. Great, great. If that fucking thing got a hold of Josh, then... We're shit out of luck. I don't know, Mike. It's possible. What's possible? It may have taken him down to the mine. What? I saw some horrible stuff down there. I think it's where that thing lives, and... Huh. F. What? Fuck it. I'm gonna get that key right from that thing's goddamn bedroom, and then I'm gonna get us all the hell out of here. And what is all that? So uh, that old guy's bag. Is that a map? <gasps> that guy was prepared for anything. <laughs> Not quite. What is this place? Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. What is that? I was down there. It was horrible. You were? There was this reporter, and I think he figured out there had been some, like, big cover-up going on. I found these plans. They knew the mine was a death trap, but they let the miners keep working anyway. Michael, I'd like to maybe focus on how we're going to get the fuck out of here, please. I'm just saying, it's weird how much crazy shit's gone on up here. What's weird is that there's a tunnel leading from the lodge to the sanatorium, see? That's how I got back here. I saw this when I was down there. That's where it lives. Em? Em, what is that? Huh? What is that? Ash. 
my god, oh my god, it's, oh my it's god. Nothing. Oh, no, it just, oh, it, no, it bit no. me and it bit you. What bit you? The, the Wendigo. The what? It's nothing, really. It's not a big deal. You okay? Shit. It doesn't hurt anymore, really. It's it's not that bad. Am if that thing bit you. I, I know what you're thinking, and I'm fine. Are you? Yes. Emily, at least let us check it out. Emily, if the Wendigo bit you, you could turn into one of those things. Oh, that's ridiculous. He said it was from eating each other. Remember, he said oh, that. Is that how it works? Yes. It happens. If it bit you, you're going to turn into one, and then you're going to turn on us. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You can't be down here with us. What? Mike. You got to go. Are you kidding me? You're putting us all in danger. Like hell I am! Emily, you can't stay here. Mike, just cool your head, okay? We don't know if it works like that. Maybe it's just a bite. I've seen what these fuckers can do, and I don't want to say it again. What is this? Guys, what are you doing? Door's right here. I am letting you do this voluntarily. Oh no, you're just making yourself feel better about sending me to my death since you know there's a Wendigo out there ready to rip me to pieces like it did with- Okay, oh my god, will you just go? Go, get out of here! Whoa, okay. Whoa, 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 Mike, calm down. You're- you're gonna shoot me? Mike, me? This is the safe room, Em! Please! It is not safe as long as you're in it. Not for us. Don't, don't do that! I'm really sorry. Fuck, oh, I can't do this. Oh my god. You did the right thing. I hope you did. Maybe. For now. Shit. Fuck, fuck. Keep an eye on her. If you see anything weird, you guys know what to do. Yeah. No one leave. Okay? It's not safe out there. I'll be back soon. I thought that, that he was going to help us. With a flamethrower, dude? Now we don't have a chance. No, guys, it just means we've got to be tough. We've got to do this on our own. I don't know if I can. What does it say? It says that the bites, it, if it bites you, it's not infectious. It doesn't do anything. Let me see uh, that. I'm sorry, what did you say? Um, so she'll be okay. It says what? You're gonna be fine. Fine? Michael almost shot me, is that she fine? Didn't shoot you. And this bitch almost let him. Hey, that's not fair. She was scared. I'm the one who's scared. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Emily. I didn't know what was going to happen. There's None of us know. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Please, for Emily, this. please, just try to understand. Understand the palm of my hand, bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so, 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 so sorry. Shit. We've got to get to Mike. Like now. Oh, 
Joshua, you should have listened to me. Because of your choices, people have died. I don't know which is worse, actively triggering events that lead to someone's death or passively allowing a tragedy to occur because you couldn't lift a goddamn finger to help someone else. Remember last year, huh? How you left your poor sisters to die? You did nothing to help them. Paralyzed by your own self-centered fear while a real threat was closing in. No, it's all about you, Josh. It's always all about you. Your game has gone terribly wrong. And your friends, like your sisters, have deserted you. You're all alone. Can you feel how cold your loneliness has become? Huh? Now, why did you hurt him? It's yourself that you despise, huh? You've already admitted as much. Oh, but of course you did. They were your friends, you misled them, you lied to them, and you put them through a night of genuine horror. Let's hope that it's not too late for atonement. And that your friends, if they still are your friends, can save you from this terrible isolation. Oh my god, guys, thank god! What took you so long? It's not so good up there right now. Uh, he's gone. We're too late. Shh! Quiet. Uh, yeah, he, uh... Wait! No more. Holy shit! What the ah! fuck? What are you looking for? Another way out. Mike, there's no key for the cable car. Josh, he's gotta have it. And what is all that? It may have taken him down to the mine. Um, what is... Huh? This is the safe room, M. <laughs> Please. Fuck, I can't do this. Oh, my God. You did the right thing. Keep an eye on her. I'll be back soon.
just need a pitchfork and a mob. See me again, huh? Hey. I was hoping I'd run into you again. Alright. Good boy. Alright, pal. Come with me. Alright. Here's the plan. I happen to see a map of this place. So, we're not flying blind. There should be a way through the psychiatric wing that'll take us right outside the mine. Think you can handle that? Oh. Couldn't have said it better myself. Ah, boy. Move like you, Wolfie. Stuck on this side. All right. There goes nothing. Awesome. Built like tanks. How crazy were these inmates?
buddy. Come on down. It's all right. I'll catch you on the flip side, huh? Maybe you should go on without me. No, Chris, we are not leaving you. We're sticking together. Mike will just have to wait. Should we try it? Well, it's not like we got a whole lot of choices here. Maybe the last place I would want to be right now. So who's going first? <laughs> After you. It's not so bad. You think this is the tunnel to the sanatorium? Of course it is. Where else would it go? Chris, I know you're hurt, but you gotta move it, all right? I'm trying, Ash. close this, right? Huh? I mean, what if something's following us? Yes, fine, close it. But we gotta keep moving. Can you just catch up, please? 
Yeah. there? Anybody? Jessica! Is it you? This is fucking crazy. Jessica. Ugh! Jessica, is that you? God, I am so glad to see you. Glad you're safe. Look. Look there. Wow, great. <gasps> the ladder's toast. We're never gonna make it up there. No, 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 I think I can. I think I can do it. It's like a rock wall. I'm gonna keep going. You should head back to the lodge. I've gotta get Mike. Good luck!
Marshmallows? down to where this fucker lives. Emily! <laughs> Mike, there's no key for the cable car. Josh, he's gotta have it. Oh, he's gone. We're too late. Shh, quiet. It may have taken him down to the mine. Wait. I'm gonna get that key right from that thing's goddamn bedroom, and then I'm gonna get us all the hell out of here. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Run! Let's find a way down to where this fucker lives. I'm gonna leave you now, Josh. It's time you learn. There's more to be afraid of that can be dreamt up by the unhinged imagination of a self-indulgent, spoiled little brat! You had so many people who cared about you, who were willing to help! But at every turn, you choose to push them away, and now you're all alone. Though by the sounds of things, you won't be alone for long. No, you won't be alone for long. Deep breaths, Josh. Deep 
breath.
It's okay. You sure? I'm not dead yet. Famous last words. <gasps> oh, it's crazy. It. I feel my fingers. So what? What does that mean? So Hannah must have buried her. God damn it. God damn it. Hannah was down here. I don't believe any of this! She would have been starving. She would have been desperate. Fuck! We need to find Josh. Right now. Tell me what to do. 
you can't Josh? tell me what to do Buddy. anymore. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, okay. Okay. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. He's tripping or something. Josh! M M Mike. Josh! Hey, man. Don't, don't hit me, please. please. Well, you would deep in it, man. Full mental jacket. We didn't think we'd get you back. Josh, Hannah was down here for weeks, a month. She dug Beth up. Sam. Mike. Hey, let's just get the fuck out of here. Okay. Josh, do you have the key for the cable car? Uh, yeah. Here. Oh, God. You see that over there? That means there's a direct way out. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way Josh is going to make it up there. Okay. If you help me up, I can go back to tell the others we're okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. You bring Josh back the way we came, and we'll all meet at the lodge. Be careful. Yeah, you too. All right, let's go. You fucked up, son of a bitch. You didn't, you didn't have to hit me so much, man. Uh, yeah, um, I'm sorry about before, man. I, I thought you killed Jess. I was wrong. How did you end up down here? Mike and I, we, we 
were messing around, and, and then it, it was... What? I don't, I don't know. I was by the window, and there was all this glass, and it was in the snow, and then it was moving so fast. Fuck. And then I was, um, just down here. Oh, God. Can you move? Yeah. Come on, Jess. Even here. It was me. What? I fell through that roof. You fell this far? Jesus. Makes two of us. What? I fell off a goddamn fire tower down here.
Stay out here. Come on. How do you rate our chances of survival? Hmm? I'm trying not to think about it.
like there are survivors. Let's pick them up. saved my life and I watched him die I heard Jessica I don't know how or why she was down there but I know I heard her he held it right up to my face right here right in front of my nose and he could have shot me he almost shot me the prick I mean you go out with a guy for however long and you think you know him but man this one really takes the cake I was right there, and I could have done something. I tried to do something. It wasn't good enough. How did you end up in the mines? I was carried and taken and... What did you see? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. He was out of his fucking mind. He wanted to hurt us. Okay? And... I thought he was the one who attacked Jess. I thought we were close. After his sisters disappeared, he'd come and talk to me. He said I was the only one who understood him. I thought... I thought we had a connection. If you need someone to talk to... I'm fine. Sometimes, after a traumatic experience... I said I'm fine. Why did you hit Josh? He was acting like a maniac, and I... I had to stop him. I thought you said he was tied up. Yeah, but... Okay, all right. Okay. I know it looks bad. But you don't understand. He was trying to fuck with our heads. I... I stabbed him, and I tried to get away, but I didn't know. I swear I didn't know. Didn't know? Who did you stab? Oh, I, I, I stabbed the maniac. I didn't know it was Josh, but then he was the psycho. And how was I supposed to know Josh had all the sauce and the gun and... Oh, my God. You bringing in meat brain next? Gonna kick him around a bit for me? I'm sorry? Meat Brain, Mr. Muscle Brawn, Matt the Incredible Sulk. Is there something we need to know? Oh, no, nothing important except, um, you know, how he basically left me to die up on a freaking tumbling tower like a world-class douche nozzle? Your friend Ashley, she told us she tried to help you. <sighs> she said she heard you calling out. <sighs> Not me. Mike. What do you remember? He came for me. He did. Came for you? Where is he? Did he make it? You need to listen to me. I don't care if you believe me or not. It doesn't matter because you will. You need to go down to the mines. What's in the mines, Sam? I've seen what's down there. And I'd give anything to unsee it.
I am Hayden Panettiere, and we are here at the studio recording Until Dawn. My name is Rami Malek, and I play Josh. My name is Megan Martin. My name is Brett Dalton. My name is Antonella Lentini, and I played Hannah and Beth. My name is Jordan Fisher, and I play the character Matthew, Matt for short. I'm Nicole Bloom, and I play Emily in the game. My name is Noah Fleiss. I am Galadriel Steinman, and I play Ashley. So Until Dawn is a story of eight teenagers who uh, revisit this cabin in the woods about a year later after a, a really traumatic experience where I've lost two of my sisters, so coming to kind of get some closure in that respect. One of the things that Larry does really well is make these multi-layered characters, and I think for just the story in general, it's, it follows the quintessential horror film plot lines, but the characters are so unique in themselves, and I think that's very cool. Oh, I hope this was the right thing to do. What? You know, getting everyone together on the anniversary. I mean, Josh seemed really pumped about us all doing something, didn't he? Yeah, no, he definitely did. I haven't seen him so excited about something in forever. Good, good. Sam, Sam and I have uh, a few things in common, such as being huge lovers of animals and she's a huge animal lover she's vegan she um, she is a pacifist I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna go as far as saying that I'm a pacifist but uh, she's spunky and cool I know that she I think is is made fun of a little bit by the rest of them who who think that her morals and her beliefs in that area are a little ridiculous and they don't agree with them, but she doesn't care. It doesn't stop her from being herself, and that's something that I hope I have in common with her. You know, he definitely uh, can be depressed at some times and a bit of a loner, but he, he takes some solace in one of his sister's friends, Sam, played by Hayden Penetere, and uh, invites everybody back to the same house the next year to kind of find some closure 
Jessica is, oh, she has a whole lot of personality. She is definitely the sort of mean girl character that, you know, at school she, she knows she's pretty, she knows that boys like her and she's gonna use it to her advantage. He's got a big heart and you can tell that that's very evident, especially how he treats his girlfriend, Emily, and um, you know, he's, he's kind of a meathead, but in the best way possible. She really knows what she wants, and she manages to, to get that from whomever it is, whether it be Matt or Mike, you know, she's really driven, and I can definitely relate to that. My, my character is uh, Chris, and he is uh, what society might consider the nerd of the group. Um, and, and he kind of embraces it. Um, Ashley is, she's a little more serious than some of the other girls. Um, she's definitely very intelligent and, and thoughtful. She kind of looks at the whole big picture of things. She's not quite as geeky as Chris, but they connect in a lot of ways. Mike is like a guy on campus. He's uh, the class president who has some charm and has, has a brain. And I, I don't know, people seem to like Mike. He gets away with a lot though. He's, he can be kind of kind of jerky. The fact that he, he really just kind of wants everyone to be happy when he wants for, he's, he's a people pleaser. And um, it's, I can, I can definitely attest to being, you know, that guy. I'm, I'm always the friend that wants everybody to be happy and wants everybody to be taken care of. And that's definitely Matt. But also, like, this character is just so fun. I rarely get to play the bitch, and so it was really, it was really fun to do that. The spirit of things? Seriously, what's wrong with you? I'm just trying to lighten the mood, Em. Don't be like that. Like what? The way you're being. You always get like this. I just think this is just the coolest thing to be a part of, and um, I just think it's going to take the world by storm. I really do. I think this genre is the wave of the future, and I think that... Um, once people see the potential behind it uh, of getting to interact with the drama that you're witnessing unfold um, in such a realistic way, um, that this, this is how entertainment's going to be from now on. Hi, this is Lee Robinson, production designer on Until Dawn. The production design for Until Dawn started with the great teen horror script that sets the characters in a Canadian Winter Mountain Lodge, being a contemporary setting with visual clues derived from classic films of that genre, such as Hitchcock's Psycho and Stanley Kubrick's Shining. The storyboards are vital to the production design as it allows the designer to understand the scale of the environments to be made and the detail that would be seen to create the atmosphere of a horror. This took us into concepts that took these storyboards further, visualizing the world through the color palette, the lighting, tone, and the mood, and developing key locations such as the lodge, the cable car stations, the forests themselves, the wilderness. As you can see, the environments and atmospheres changed quite a bit from warm and inviting to cold and threatening. The Millionaire's Mountain Lodge was a key example it was designed to be made from nearby stone and timber, embedding it into the landscape, with a contrasting and contemporary interior needing to be opulent and extravagant. We created dark and claustrophobic corridors with ominous and large open spaces, almost cathedral-like in size, and with huge structures to silhouette and dwarf the characters within, providing a labyrinth to explore and wander. Each character was developed with a strong visual identity in mind, with contrasting colours, tones and silhouettes to identify them, each to have their own texture, pattern and shape, so that when they were lined up you could always identify them. The costume designs allowed a range of clothes that would suit them for the cold winter weather but also have an element of style and individualism, so that the audience could look at them and relate, recognising themselves within them. A lady would like to cuddle up with her man by a nice cozy fire bathed in atmospheric mood lighting. Right, it'll get plenty toasty once we're rubbing up against each other. My yeah. fire and mood lighting. Yes. Working with the lighting artists, we really brought the look and feel of the world together. And this required a thorough understanding of the visual language of teen horror. 
A key scene was where all the characters emerge out of the rear of the lodge chasing Hannah. A contrast is evident straight away from the exterior wilderness to the warmth of the lodge. The attention to character lighting here is through the bounce and rim lighting, accented colours and composition, creating characters that come from the dark into the light and back again with an emotional effect. Guys, there's someone outside. What the hell? Hannah! What's going on? Where's my sister going? Oh, it's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank, Han. My name is Will Biles, Executive Creative Director of Until Dawn. The first part of getting a believable facial performance in-game is to capture, topographically, the actor's range of emotional expressions as separate versions of the same head. Every tiny nuance gets digitised and merged, effectively creating a model that can recreate every facial movement that the actor makes. Once the topography has been recorded, the actor's performance itself can be captured by using a predetermined set of marker points drawn precisely on the face and a high-def helmet cam wirelessly linked to capture devices. The camera is the small box where it looks like the microphone should be. It records in high-def the movement of the dots throughout the performance that will drive the expressions captured earlier. Unlike other systems, this form of capture is far less lossy because there are fewer interpretations between performance captured and performance rendered finally in game. The audio is also recorded via two separate Lavalier mics attached to the helmet. It takes a while for the actors to acclimatize to carrying around the recording devices and the helmet cams, but very soon the shoot becomes similar to any other effects shoot or a green screen shoot. The actors in these scenes are only recording facial animation, but use cursory body movements for pacing. Wait, and maybe we should all stick together and find everybody and make sure they're all okay, so... 1-1, one, one, the year before the prank. Take two, Mark. Other than the other actors, they have to use their imagination for everything and everywhere that they are supposed to be seeing and feeling. From a hot midday studio in Los Angeles to a freezing midnight mountain in British Columbia. Until Dawn has a dynamic, ever-changing story, the facial performances and the body performances are recorded separately with different systems. With the body capture, we use reflective bead suits and an infrared camera matrix system that drives the CG bone hierarchies in our character models. <sighs> These performances cover everything from character locomotion, scene-specific performances and stunt work, most of which was recorded at studios in Pinewood and Shepparton, near London. Hannah! Hello? Combining all the elements Hannah. seamlessly in the final game becomes a formidable editing and logistical task. Every variation, both physical and emotional, must be combined in these multi-edits. <laughs> Scaffolding props have to stand in for the sets because the hundreds of infrared cameras have to be able to see all of the reflective beads on the actor. Just move over there. Go on, move. Let me say what I came to say. I'm here to tell you what you're up against being back on this mountain. You should never have returned. I don't know why you did after what happened last year. You mean with him and Beth? Yeah, how could you know without being involved? I don't take kindly to you kids coming up here to my mountain. Your mountain? The mountain don't belong to me, it's true. But it don't belong to the Washingtons. 
This mountain belongs to the Wendigo. Hi, this is Lee Robinson, production designer at Supermassive Games. Understanding the ancient myths of the Wendigo was key for their development that helped the visual look. Through sketches and concepts, these elements were visualized, such as eyes being milky, almost dead, with loss of lips and eyelids due to frostbite, fangs growing and arms and legs getting longer, with skin hardening and thickening to look snarling and menacing, yet withered and lean. What the hell was that? Another fucking piece of... Fingers and toenails extending like claws, allowing them to climb effortlessly. We made them look gaunt and weathered, and having ragged remains of clothes they wore, Bloodstained and rotten, with patches of hair still remaining, they retained strong skeletal limbs, which enabled them to be agile and quick through the environment. Where are you? My name is Jamie Gallopo, animation director at Supermassive. The overall direction on the creature was to be very strong, to be extremely fast. We wanted a spider-like movement to the creature. One minute scampering, to leaping, and then crawling. Almost instantaneous. And finally, we wanted the creature to have this real uncontrollable thirst for flesh. From a sound design perspective, the Wendigo is a real challenge. For the main vocalizations of the Wendigo, we used our own vocalizations, various different animals from the exotic to the farmyard, various uh, plugins and processes to gel these sounds together and keep a human resonance behind that voice, telling the backstory of the Wendigo. Not <laughs> During the chase sequences, the anger of the Wendigo is felt by encircling breaths, screams and screeches um, that uh, essentially chase you as you're being chased by the Wendigo. We would uh, layer them up in a multitude of layers, sometimes 15, 20 sounds playing at the same time, to build up the vocalizations for this fearsome creature, which is always in attack mode, hyperactive, and chasing you throughout the game. Hi, Larry. Hey, Graham. Hi, my name is Graham Resnick. I'm a filmmaker, writer, director, sound designer, and uh, I started working with Larry Fessenden about 10, 15 years ago through my friend Ty West, who I grew up with and uh, have done a lot of sound design with on his films. And uh, he was producing Ty's films at the time, and uh, Ty introduced me to Larry. Larry produced my first feature, and we've written together on several projects. My name is Larry Fesenden. I'm a filmmaker. I, uh, I run Glass Eye Picks, which is um, an independent production company out of New York. We make indie movies, uh, a lot of scary movies as well. Um, and uh, I got a call to audition to write uh, this video game. And uh, I called my pal Graham Resnick because Graham is a gamer. And um, while I thought I could offer something to the idea of writing this multi-branching story, I knew that I would want Graham's expertise as a lover of uh, gameplay since I guess games were started. So, and, and, and just as a lover. That's and as a lover, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, Which is why there's so many sex jokes in the, yeah. in the game. <laughs> there was one Italian website that did say the Larry oh, Preston right. and Graham Resnick, the two lovers behind <laughs> Until Dawn. Come here. Maybe I know how to handle you, too. I am definitely ready to be handled. So uh, I wanted Graham by my side. Uh, yeah, and we, we got the gig, and it was, it's been an amazing ride. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, my God. She's taking your shirt off. What? Oh, my God. Matt, what are you doing here? Uh, Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. Hannah. It's all got out of hand, but... So in the game, the, the basic setup is that uh, a year prior to the game's start, all these kids had gone up to a, a ski lodge that was owned by the parents of one of the kids. 
uh, or a couple of the kids, and um, some of the teenagers played a prank on some of the other teenagers, and a terrible tragedy occurred when a few of them, uh, two sisters, ran out into a blizzard, and uh, were never seen from again. <laughs> So now, a year later, uh, this is kind of torn apart, this group of friends. They've, uh, they've gone through some trials and tribulations in the past year. The brother of the two girls has uh, had a lot of psychological issues. And, and to kind of help him cope uh, and help them all get over it, they all returned to the lodge a year later, back up on the mountain. And uh, the idea <laughs> is to, to get over it, but... Um, the healing does not begin. Does not begin. <laughs>